Hi everyone, I'm Shauna and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about eight products that I thought would transform my life, but didn't. There is definitely a red thread that runs through these products, something similar that, that all of these products definitely embody. And there's also like some more category based similarities. And a lot of these products I'm going to talk about today are aspirational or fantasy self items, things that Fantasy Shauna does or things that I hope that I would do and never kind of came to fruition. So I have some beauty products, some lifestyle products. There's, some, there's definitely an interesting uh, mix here. So I'm going to get started with the first two because these are very similar. So the first item is the TLC Tsukari Baby Facial. This was in my project pan. It's kind of temporarily out while I'm dealing with some acne and a rash. And a very similar item that I bought for a similar reason is the Shiseido White Loosen Brightening Cream. So I bought this in Chicago last year. And this product can't be purchased in Canada because we have more strict regulations on cosmetics and especially with peels, the strength of peels that you can buy just over the counter. So I had been lusting after this for weeks, longer than that, month. I have been wanting this for so long because, and I even tried to purchase it and that's when I learned we don't have it in Canada. And I wanted this because everybody who talked about it talked about how transformative it was for the skin. It made it smoother, clearer, brighter, red spots, dark spots, acne spots, all of it was faded. Now, I feel like your average person, especially an average person on YouTube, in my opinion, has wonderful skin. And I have pretty significant acne scarring and I haven't quite seen uh, many people who have acne scarring like myself. I'm sure there's many out there, but especially on the platform, I haven't seen a lot like myself. So first of all, our skin needs are different. But what happened with this is that I expected a cosmetic topical product to perform radically on my skin and fundamentally change my skin in ways that aren't possible for just an over-the-counter kind of cosmetic item. And I put, not only did I have unreal unrealistic expectations for what this thing could do, but I also attached emotion and like self-worth onto this item. I felt as though if I had different skin, I would feel beautiful. I would feel more confident that is dangerous and I think that even if I were to have different skin there's no way that I could know that I would be more confident often and I hear this a lot from people who let's say lose weight that they're not inherently feeling more beautiful or more confident that many of their insecurities remain I just assumed that I would feel better and more beautiful with this product and it can't even do that in the first place and that is a very similar reason to this to this white loosen cream so first of all the ingredients on this are not great and I didn't check the ingredients when I bought it I didn't care because at the time of purchasing this I was so desperate to change my skin because I was breaking out really bad and I had a lot of redness and acne scars. My, my skin scars really easily and I have scars on my skin, even like on my legs. I nicked myself shaving uh, about six months ago and I have a scar from it, just like a regular, not even anything deep. And so I have a scar on my lip from an acne you know, spot that appeared a year ago and it hasn't gone away. Same thing with something under my eye. So I, I do like, I do scar pretty easily. And so I thought that this would change all that. I would get beautiful, clearer skin, more even, less red from those scars. And not just that, I would feel so beautiful and so confident because my skin was different. 
And one of the thing I was I was doing was attaching self my self worth to my skin. And I was attaching morality and beauty to to my to my skin as well. When you attach your own self self worth to your skin and have it associated with clearness or even acne, having acne can it really affected who I am and and my self worth because I felt less than and like worthless if I had acne. I definitely didn't feel beautiful and that like that totally affected how I saw myself in general, which is why I was so keen on changing my skin because it wasn't just about beauty and confidence. It was also about who I am as a person and feeling good in that. I wish that I had learned this lesson with these things, but having better skin doesn't change how you attach worth to things. I, I definitely learned that lesson the hard way. I don't do that anymore. And so there's only so much that I can do about it. And even with going to the to the to like the dermatologist as an example, like it's very difficult to prevent acne. It's about like treating it once it comes. So I can treat it in certain ways. But my acne was such a concern for such a long time that I would do anything. And I wasted hundreds of dollars trying to find the thing that would cure my acne so so I could change my self-worth. This is this is I think an incredibly important lesson that I've learned now that I am not lesser than, less important, or less valuable as a person because of the way that my skin looks. You know, the money that the money that I spent, like those two products, so that Shiseido cream is $120 ish. And then that drunk that drunk elephant product is 80 USD plus tax plus conversion on both of those things is over hundred dollars. So that's like two hundred and fifty dollars in those two things. That that's definitely a long winded explanation. I expected to transform my life and who I am and my value through my skin. Okay. The next two things are not quite as deep, but also some more beauty products. I have the Pat McGrath lipstick in 211 Obsession. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Oh my god. Oh. It's. I could look at this thing all day. Oh, it's beautiful. And then this. I didn't eat, so this is the second time I'm filming this. I filmed it without my mic and it was actually such a good take, but I opened this for the first time now. And this, I like I hadn't even opened before today. And I'm sharing these things for a very similar reason. So, I mean, we're all probably very familiar. The, like, the, such a huge mirror. Can we see that? Is my, is my light? blocking you. Either way, these powders are so finely milled and so beautiful. And I bought these, I bought these two things for very similar reasons. One, because I've heard a lot of hype about these products and I think that they became the platform for what I'm about to say. A lot of people talk about Pat McGrath and her lipsticks and a lot of people talk about Hourglass and these powders, but especially the unlocked pal the unlocked palette from last year. I think it's also like the medium or deep one. And so I was genuinely interested in trying these things. But these things are luxury. They are just like the epitome of luxury. They were very expensive. This palette was like $103 Canadian. This lipstick was about 50 bucks, $54, something like that. Crazy to buy these things. And so I was feeling as though I would be this luxurious queen and I would feel bougie if I use these products. And do you know these women in your life who are so chic and so classy all the time? Women who can put on like a BB cream and a lipstick or a BB cream and an eyebrow and a mascara and they're beautiful and classy. They wear like Chanel flats and like crisp trousers. Everything they wear is just class. Meanwhile, I'm over here in my yellow rain jacket and rain boots carrying like a North Face backpack and my lunchbox. 
you know, I'm not the class, I'm, I'm not the epitome of class over here, people. And so I thought, and I've always kind of wanted to, I've always kind of, I don't know, like been a little bit insecure about that. I've always wanted to be a little bit more put together and a little bit classy. And I feel as though like no matter what I do, I'm always looking disheveled. I'm always a little unkempt, unput together. And I just want to be a classy ass queen, you know? And, but that's just like not me. So I thought that these things would do that. That if I put on some, you know, Pat McGrath, I would feel classy. I would be a little bit more classy. I would feel bougie and it would just like come. I would like harness those powers and somehow magically overnight, I would just be a classy queen. That's it. Not how it works <laughs> at all. And so... I'm just me, you know? A lot of this, I think, is just about accepting who I am and my place in life. And it's okay. We all aren't going to be a classy queen and that's totally fine, you know? So these things aren't going to transform me into like, I don't know exactly who I'm thinking of right now, but somebody more classy. (laughs) I can't take a shot for every time I say classy. I have a bit of a weird one for you. This book is a doorstop, like it's huge. And this book is Our Bodies, Ourselves by the Boston Women's Health Book Collective. This this is like an academic transformation I'm about to talk about. So in my fourth year for my senior thesis, I wrote about Our Bodies, Ourselves. And the Boston Women's Health Book Collective have written a series of books starting in the early 70s. The collective I think started in like 1969. Anyways. So these women who, who created this book were pivotal in the women's health movement of second wave feminism in the United States. They did a lot and they taught many women about their bodies for the first time, giving them knowledge and empowerment. Very important. I went to their archives in Boston and looked through all of their material and there's also lots of letters from women there and I was so empowered by that. And I felt as though I had to own this book to be a good feminist. And not just that, but there's a couple other books that I bought around this time that I had to have on my bookshelf to be taken seriously as a feminist and to just be a good feminist. And that's not how it works. You can't be a good feminist or a good ally by just purchasing stuff. That's very performative and surface. And I think... I thought or felt that by owning these things, I would feel more like a feminist. Perhaps I was feeling more like an imposter at the time. And that like owning these things would would make me feel that way or maybe be that way. But also like maybe I would read them too. And I've actually like, I've actually read this before for my project. My library had copies, you know? Uh, They had copies of all of them. I just thought it would be way better to work out of my own personal book and then have it for my bookshelf, which like is like it it is totally performative. I thought by owning these books that I would I would somehow be more than in my experience, like in in my intellectual or academic life. Again, I think aspirational that I would read more feminist literature on my off time, I would somehow be a better ally and more knowledgeable. And this like, this didn't make me a better feminist. Learning through reading, like in terms of my intellectual life, learning through reading and talking and writing is exactly how I became more knowledgeable. And you can't just be because you own stuff. That's definitely was like an insecurity that I thought I could fix. With this thing, and also like I entered into that program really late in my academic career. So I thought that like I would just feel better about that if I own this. No, I can tell you that I was not transformed into a miraculous, you know, intersectional feminist who was just knows all the things, fights for all the right reasons, and like doesn't misgender anybody, you know, like, um, (laughs) yes, I think I've said my piece on that, on that book. Let's talk about this. This is a two for one. So I don't actually have it because it's an electronic resource, but this is combined with a meal prep 
online like printable that I bought for $12.99. I still remember the price. And I thought by owning these things, I would be a great meal prepper. I would eat more health, I would eat healthier and I would eat better. I mean, obviously the printable, I think it's explanatory that you have it, you'll just do it and you'll be fabulous. But this is like, I want to make delicious, healthy, fabulous foods. If I own this, I want to eat out of this. I want to make stuff to put in this. Again, not what happened and not how it works. But with this, I felt as though most of the time I just use my regular containers. And this I feel as though you can't just put any kind of lunch in here. It has to be special. It has to be a special kind of lunch. It's a very specific kind of container. So you can't just put any food in it which stopped me from using it as it is. I don't know, maybe I need to do a video on like eating out of this thing for a week to like debunk or find out if that feeling is actually true, but it wasn't as ideal as I expected. Owning stuff doesn't make you want to use it. I'm not healthier, better meal prepper because I have cute lunch containers and a planner. You can plan on anything and you don't need any kind of fancy stuff to do it. Okay, the last thing is this yoga mat. And this is a couple years old. I think maybe two years old. I think 2018 was like the year of yoga for me or it was supposed to be. I bought this so I could do yoga at home with like also the side bonus of being able to take this to do yoga at my gym. And I thought by owning this, I would be those like beautiful yogis on Instagram who have amazing bodies, who eat great, who are like meditating or having meditative components through their yoga. Their flows are great. They're so strong. And I don't really like doing yoga at home. It was definitely an aspirational purchase. And buying this didn't make me become that like beautiful, calm yogi. You don't even need a yoga mat to do yoga. You don't. So totally aspirational. And with this, I also, in 2019, I bought the Calm app. It was like 60 or $65. I thought I would meditate every day. I would meditate before bed. I would be so calm, so stress and anxiety free. And I would just change my, change my life. I would change my thinking habits because I was meditating. Maybe some people can start meditating out of nowhere but buying a $65 meditating app doesn't make you like meditation. I was never really into meditation and I thought that I could change my habits and therefore my life through owning a meditation app. And yeah, I mean, so, okay, this yoga mat I did buy myself and my partner did get one. Um, it's like a non-slip one, which I love way more. And I'm glad I have one because I do do yoga from time to time but I much prefer doing yoga like in studio. So I do like bringing it with me. So it's my own mat. I can do what I want with it. And so I am glad I own that. This one was so slippery. I constantly felt like I would get sweaty and then my feet and my hands would slide off this. The other one is way better. It was definitely like a cheap, I bought this at Winners. It was a cheap purchase. And I think the moral of the story of this stuff is that I was trying to transform myself and my habits through stuff. That's something I talked about in the beginning of my no buy year, but these are just some examples, like concrete examples of things I purchased in which I try to transform who I am through my things. And you're never gonna become a better person or change aspects of your personality or character through stuff. It's generally not the way that that works. Loving yourself, who you are and what you bring to the table always matters more, at least in my opinion and for me. And I'm not interested in feeding my insecurities and somehow trying to correct them through buying new things. It's not, it's not what I want and I wanna like love and appreciate myself for who I am, my personality, and my characteristic. I can't say that I won't make these kinds of purchases in the future, but I feel like talking through them with you definitely makes some of these habits more concrete and some of these things that I've done and I would like to change, I would like to stop 
it, like it gives me tangible examples of how I've done those things and the kinds of products and habits I've tried to invest in. So I hope you found this entertaining, interesting to watch. And I would like to know, are there any products like this that you've bought that you've tried to transform your life with? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again around here soon. Bye.